AI is everywhere nowadays, and since privacy is what I do for a living, I figured it'd be fun to see how well it does. We're gonna start with simple stuff here. Is privacy important? All right, yes, privacy is important for several reasons. It allows individuals to maintain control over their personal information and protect their identities. It also enables individuals to have a sense of autonomy and freedom in their lives, as well as the ability to express themselves without fear of surveillance or judgment. Additionally, privacy is important for maintaining personal relationship, as it allows individuals to share personal information with trusted family and family members without the fear of that information being exposed to others. It's also essential for protecting confidential information in professional contexts, such as in healthcare, finance, or legal settings. Overall, privacy is a fundamental right that should be protected as it plays a crucial role in promoting individual autonomy, freedom, and trust in both personal and professional contexts. This is actually really good. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. This is really solid. I really like this, especially um, how it maintains personal relationships. That's something that not many people talk about. So huge fan of this answer. The only thing I would add is it would have been cool to cite some actual things, like how privacy is not just a fundamental right that's you know based on ChatGPT's opinion, but it'd be cool if they cited the fact that privacy is actually listed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is what we pretty much use as our definition of what are basic human rights um, in this day and age. What should I do to prevent getting caught up in a data breach? If you follow surveillance support, you know that we cover like countless data breaches every week. So what can someone do to prevent that? I'm not gonna read this whole thing off, but step one, use strong and unique passwords. Step two, enable two-factor authentication. Step three, be cautious of phishing emails. Step four, keep your software up to date. Step five, be careful what you share online. Step six, use a reputable antivirus program. And step seven, monitor your accounts for suspicious activities. I love all of this actually with the exception of six. I'd give this an eight out of 10 answer. Nowadays on both Windows and Mac OS, you already have built in native anti-malware support um, and you don't really need to download a new reputable antivirus program, though for the record, ChatGPT isn't necessarily saying that you should, but this is definitely the implication. If I'm someone new to the privacy world and I read this answer, I would probably be like, okay, I need to find an antivirus program to purchase and use, when in reality, you don't need it on mobile devices, you don't need it on Windows, you don't need it on uh, Mac OS. If the world stuck to these steps with the exception of six, uh, the whole world would be a lot safer and these data breaches would be a lot less of a problem. All right, up next, this is kind of a common question we get. Should I be using a VPN or Tor? A VPN is a service that encrypts your internet traffic and routes it through a remote server. This can help protect your online privacy and security by hiding your IP address and location as well as encrypting your internet traffic. VPNs are often used for activities such as accessing geo-restricted content or connecting to public Wi-Fi networks securely. On the other hand, Tor is a free and open source software that routes your internet traffic through a network of servers making it difficult to trace your online activity back to your physical location. Tor is often used for activities that require a high level of anonymity such as accessing the dark web or communicating with whistleblowers. Both VPNs and Tor have their advantages and disadvantages and the choice between the two depends on your specific needs and priorities. VPNs are generally easier to use and often faster internet speeds but they may not provide the same level of anonymity as Tor. Tor on the other hand is slower and may not be suitable for activities but it offers a higher level of anonymity. Ultimately whether you should use a VPN or Tor depends on your specific needs and circumstances. Honestly this is a, almost a perfect answer. This is almost word for word what I like to tell people when they ask me the difference between a VPN or Tor. So this is absolutely phenomenal. Very impressed with this response. A 10 out of 10 answer in my book. What messengers should I use for strong privacy and security? This is ChatGPT's recommended messengers. Signal's number one, WhatsApp is number two, Telegram is number three, Wicker number four, Threema is a five. All of these messaging apps offer strong privacy and security features, but it's important to keep in mind that no app can offer 100% security. It's also important to use strong passwords, enable two-factor authentication where possible, and be cautious of phishing attempts and other security threats. Um, regarding the actual recommendations, I am a fan of Signal being there, and aside from that, I'm actually not a fan of the rest of the recommendations. Um, I would be a big fan of them recommending Briar, or maybe even session um, over things like Telegram. I guess what they don't really mention here is that Telegram is a cloud-based messaging app that offers end-to-end -end encryption, but that's not a default. And also it doesn't apply to all of their features. Um, and I really would not be using Telegram if privacy and security is really your goal. Um, it doesn't mention how WhatsApp has metadata concerns and how Signal addresses both of those concerns of WhatsApp and Telegram incredibly well, as Signal offers end-to-end -end encryption by default for everybody in every context. And it also strips pretty much all metadata data about its users. So when you use Signal, there's almost nothing that Signal knows about you. I'd give this like a five out of 10. I'm pretty disappointed in this response. Another question, what password manager should I be using? LastPass, no, 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 no. All right, 
LastPass rant incoming. LastPass is A, pretty much paid for now because their free plan is a joke, is not open source, has suffered countless security and data incidents in the past. I, at this point, consider LastPass completely untrusted. Do not use LastPass if you care about your security and you want your passwords to stay safe. They have straight up leaked people's vaults at this point. It's, it's a joke, don't use LastPass. One password, on the other hand, I am a fan of. They are proprietary um, and all of that, but they actually have a very strong security practices and their team knows what the hell they're doing, unlike LastPass. Um, Bitwarden is probably our go-to recommendation. You're gonna see Bitwarden as well out there. Um, it's open source, it's cloud-based, and it's probably my go-to recommendation for people who want a traditional cloud-based password manager. I don't have too much beef with Dashlane, but I would almost always push people towards Bitwarden. And if they don't like Bitwarden, then one password is an option. Now, the one thing that's really missing here is keep Pass. Key pass is probably one of the best options. Kind of weird uh, to not see key pass on this list. And I do like the inclusion here at the end of all these password managers offer strong security features, but the most suitable one will depend on your specific needs and preferences. It's important to choose a password manager that you trust and to use a strong, unique master password to protect your password vault. Also use 2FA if your vaults support 2FA, which many of them do nowadays. I'd give this like a five out of 10 answer. I don't like how LastPass was included. I don't like how key pass is missing. To continue the tough questions, what steps should I take to harden my Firefox installation. Here are the steps you can take to harden your Firefox installation. One, update Firefox, make sure you're using the latest version. Two, install privacy and security add-ons, and the add-ons they reference are uBlock Origin, HTTPS Everywhere, and Privacy Badger. We'll talk about that soon. Three, configure your privacy settings, um, things like enabling do not track feature, disabling third-party cookies, and clearing your browser history and cache regularly. Four, enable multi-factor authentication um, through Firefox Lockwise, okay? Uh, use a VPN and then keep your system up to date. By following these steps, you can harden your Firefox installation and improve your online privacy and security. I'd say this is a three out of 10 answer. There's a lot, a lot of missing context here. So at least our guides aren't going anywhere soon. First off, Privacy Badger and HTTPS Everywhere just aren't necessary anymore. So that's just a straight up mistake. Um, at this point, HTTPS Everywhere has actually been deprecated and it's built into pretty much every browser, including Firefox. And also uBlock Origin for the most part does everything Privacy Badger does. Privacy Badger is also kind of an extension that we no longer recommend for Firefox hardening. There's also a lot of missing context here because there's a lot of things you can do with uBlock Origin instead of just installing it. uBlock Origin has a moderate mode, an advanced mode, and lots of other things you can do. And unless ChatGPT says you should do something with uBlock Origin, people might get the implication that they just have to install uBlock Origin and they're done. Enabling the do not track feature is actually a debatable privacy practice because most websites don't even respect it and actually it does make you stand out a little bit. Disabling third-party cookies is good, but I believe that's a default now in Firefox, if I'm not mistaken. And then clearing your browser history and cache regularly is always a good advantage. But there are lots of privacy settings they're not covering here in the about config menu or how you can use user JS files with something like Arc and Fox, which is a project that's designed to harden your Firefox installation um, kind of automatically, but it still requires a lot of manual effort as well. So I'm um, pretty disappointed uh, so far in this. This is more of like general how to make your browser are a little bit more private and secure advice, not like how to harden your browser and make it as private and secure as possible. There's just so much missing stuff here. Yeah, I'd give this a three out of 10. I'm not very happy with this response. This one's an interesting one. Is open source software more secure than proprietary software? It's one of my biggest pet peeves because just because something's open source doesn't inherently make it more secure. It makes it more transparent and trustworthy and it gives the ability to have more oversight over the software, but that doesn't necessarily make it more secure. Open source software and proprietary software each have their own advantages and disadvantages when it comes to security. One advantage of open source software is that the source code is freely available and can be reviewed by anyone. This means that security researchers and other interested parties can scrutinize the code for vulnerabilities and any security issues that are discovered can be reported and fixed quickly. In addition, because the code is open, it can be audited for backdoors and other malicious code that might be hidden in proprietary software. Another advantage of open source software is that it often has a large community of developers and users who can contribute to the software's development, testing, and security. This can result in a more robust and secure software product as bugs and vulnerabilities can be identified and fixed more quickly. However, there are also advantages to proprietary software. For example, because the source code is not publicly available, it may be more difficult for attackers to find and exploit vulnerabilities. In addition, proprietary software vendors may have more resources and funding to invest in security testing and development. In the end, whether open source or proprietary software is more secure depends on a variety of factors, including the quality of the software, the security practices of the developers, and the level of scrutiny the code receives. In general, both types of software 
can be made secure, but it is important to evaluate each software product on its own merits and assess the security risks and benefits of each. Honestly, this is really good. I'd give this a nine out of 10. You can have open source software with terrible security practices um, and everything is done in a very loosey goosey way. And it's not actually done with proper oversight from real security people who know what the hell they're doing. And on the other hand, you can have proprietary software that even though it's not being publicly vetted, at least you have a team behind it that knows what the hell they're doing and they're building things in a very secure way. You still need to assess the software to make sure it's secure. Just because it's open source is not a cop out as to it being secure software. If I'm in a situation where my own government is trying to spy on my movements and digital devices, what should I do to protect myself? If you're in a situation where your own government is trying to spy on your movements and digital devices, there are several steps you can take to protect yourself. Use a secure operating system. Considering using, it's things like this that kind of bug me. Use a secure operating system. Consider using a privacy focused operating system. Those are two different things, okay? You can have a very secure operating system that's not designed for privacy. <laughs> Chrome OS, or you can use a privacy focused operating system without an emphasis on security. Use encryption, encrypt your communications like using PGP or Signal, and encrypt your files and hard drives using tools like VeraCrypt or BitLocker. Nice recommendation. Use a virtual private network. Uh, if you're being spied on by the government, I'd probably be using Tor or something more foolproof, but I guess using a VPN is better than using nothing. Use secure communication channels, uh, such as end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps like Signal, and avoid using unencrypted email or other insecure communication channels. Fantastic. Be cautious of public Wi-Fi, avoid using public Wi-Fi networks, which can be vulnerable to hacking and snooping. If you must use a public Wi-Fi, use a VPN to encrypt your traffic, keep your software up to date and seek expert advice. That's probably the biggest one here. You know, if you're in this situation and um, you're able to lean on expert advice, you need that expert advice because every situation is going to be very individual and there's gonna be lots of little nuances to every particular situation. It depends what government you're going against. It depends what your individual situation is like. If you have access to money, if you have access to certain devices, if you have access to certain tools, it depends what kind of information you need to protect. If you're still trying to publish content to the world, or if you're trying to publish articles while you're trying to protect yourself, that's different than you just trying to hide everything. So there's all these little things and that's where that expert advice comes in. I'd give this like a seven out of 10. I think there's some missing nuance here and there's a little bit, there's, and here's kind of the general problem I see with ChatGPT. It's good at you know bringing things up that are valid points, but this together, these seven points together are not actually a coherent strategy to fight a government. That's the missing nuance, that's the missing perspective that ChatGPT as of today just cannot offer. And actually this ties into the final bit of this video, which is I think I still have a job, which is you know, good for me. May, you know, it'd be nice someday if people can just get instant, perfect privacy advice from this tool, because that would make everyone a little bit more private if people wanted to be private. And I think that's a win for everybody. But there's a lot of missing nuance, missing context, and just missing, uh, there's, there's something missing with ChatGPT. I think ChatGPT today did overall really well. I'm impressed with some of the stuff it was able to recommend and do. But when we start getting to the more complicated questions, we really start to see the quality start to drop pretty quickly. Make sure to join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Techlore. We literally rely on all of our supporters and all of you people watching to keep this content going for free. Our goal is to spread privacy and security to the masses, and you can directly help us do that. Seriously, go check out our Patreon. There's some fun perks there for you, and you can even join the list of names on the bottom of the screen right now and support our content and have your name on there and be in our content. So thank you all very much for being a patron if you are a patron of ours, and if you're not, thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time on Techlore.